Today I want to share, you, share with you guys the story of Samvel and Antranik. So Samvel lives in a village in Tavush. It takes about four hours to get to Movsa's village from Yerevan. You first have to take a, a, a bus to Bert, and from Bert you either have to find someone that goes to Movsa's or, or get a cab. Andranik lives with his mom, grandmother, and two older sisters. His father and grandfather are in Russia for work. He goes to school and is in the sixth grade. His school has not had a math teacher for over two years. And Digin Arusik, who happens to be good in math, just teaches those classes, but she's actually the history teacher. The average, uh, average teacher in his school is about 55 years old, and they still use the same methodology of teaching since pre-independence. Now, Antranik lives in California. He just graduated from a top university and is looking for ways to establish his career while looking for opportunities to build a better world, especially a better Armenia. Andranik considers himself as a global citizen. He's passionate about international development and wants to make a difference. Growing up with an Armenian identity has allowed Andranik to build a special connection towards Armenia. He has this inner desire to use his skills and experiences gained throughout the years to better the future of Armenia. And just like many Armenians around the world, he too feels a responsibility towards Armenia. So what is the secret to a bright Armenia? What is the avenue of success to a, uh, to a future, to a positive future of Armenia? The secret weapon is our children and our future leaders. An excellent education, an excellent base education, allows children to unlock their full potential throughout their lives and allows them to break the cycle of poverty and ultimately the status quo. We as Armenians value education and we believe it's one of the lifelines of our nation. We as a culture value education and think it's the greatest tool to use to preserve our identity and our nation alive. For, so, for someone like Sambel, growing up in Movsa's village without a male role model in his life, without basic math skills, without hope for the future for himself, his community, and his country, how is Sambel going to work for a better Armenia? What is Samuel's predicted life trajectory? Samuel will most likely drop out, of the, drop out of school after the eighth grade. He will work in the fields to support his family. And once he's old enough, he will move to Russia to join his father and grandfather. He will not obtain a higher education, and he will not be able to set a future for himself. And he will ultimately not be able to break away from the circle of poverty and join the 30% of Armenians living below poverty. So what is going to keep Samvel in his community working to develop the future of Armenia? Now imagine this. The, city of Mo the village of Movsez has a brand new math teacher. The only math teacher, in fact. He's a top graduate from a, from a university in California. He's a robotics engineer who has chosen to move to Armenia to contribute to the development of Armenia. He's a passionate young man filled with bright ideas, knowledge, and experiences. Now, how do you think this one person is going to impact the entire community and change the dynamic of the school? Let me remind you, the school only has 54 students. So this individual is not only going to be impacting the lives of so many students, but in turn, their families as well, too. If nothing changes in Movsas and the status quo is not broken, if it's business as usual, then the outcomes and results will remain the same. So how is this one individual going to bring impact to this entire community? First, he's going to remind the students that the sky is the limit. He's not only going to teach the students about the magic of math, but he's also going to teach them the value of education. He's going to teach the students to be great global citizens. He's going to teach them to think outside of the box and think critically. He's also going to remind the students about all of the wonderful characteristics that Movsas has. He's going to work with the community to build a strong community that offers opportunities for all that live there. So leaving Movsas is no longer an option. We at Teach for Armenia believe 
The only way to do this is through an excellent base education. We're not saying that every child must have a university degree, but what we are saying is that every child has the right to choose to whatever they want to be. It is every child's right to choose or to paint the picture for the future themselves. It is our duty to give those children the skill sets they will need to become the next change makers of our nation and take ownership of their future. Become a global citizen like Andranik. Take the challenge, join the Teach for Armenia movement, and inspire Armenia's future. Let's innovate Armenia with Teach for Armenia. Thank you. So, so I've known about Teach for Armenia for ever since uh, I met Larissa, and uh, she she told me about her vision. And she originally was a Teach for America volunteer, and she's you know she shared with me and my wife uh, all the wonderful things that she had learned working in I think Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. Glendale, Arizona. <laughs> Glendale, Arizona. All there, there is another Glendale. Glendale. Armenians <laughs> lead to Glendale. So it would be really, really fantastic for you to share your personal journey of how you got hooked up, how you were inspired sure. to, to move to Armenia to do what you're doing. Sure. So I work in the headquarters. I have it easy. I live in Yerevan. It's the heroes that actually move there to teach in the communities. So I'm from San Francisco originally. Like, uh, like it said in my bio, I attended the ol only Armenian school there. Um, I was writing a legal journal for my master's degree on education and laws that were passed that decentralized the education system in Armenia. So I found Teach for Armenia to be a solution to this massive crisis that our nation was dealing with. And at that time, Teach for Armenia was hiring for a director of development, which, um, which I applied to, and thankfully I was accepted, I was hired to join the team. So I worked from San Francisco all the way until January, and in the coldest winter Armenia has had since 1994, I chose to move to Armenia and join the rest of the team there. So uh, currently we have 71 teachers teaching in six regions in Armenia. We're impacting 5,000 students directly. This year, our program entered Shirak as well, too. So now we're in six regions total. We are going to be growing on a rapid scale. So we're here recruiting for fellows who want to join our fellowship to meet the demands of our scale for the next five years. So what would you, what would you tell parents that if, if, their, if their children go to them and they say, hey, we want to go to Armenia and we want to go to these remote regions and become teachers? And of course, you know, the conservative parents that we do have mostly, <laughs> maybe not your parents, <laughs> what would what would be your message to those parents? Sure. My mom is from Hayastan herself, and the second I told her I'm moving to Armenia, she thought it was like I was crazy or something. So um, my message would be the impact you make and the satisfaction you receive from being in the communities is endless. Money can't buy feelings like that. Money or all of the careers that we could have here or anywhere around the world does not give you that self-satisfaction of making a direct impact in someone else's life. You literally are directly impacting this entire school. Those children who have so much potential, who are waiting for someone to be there to tell them, yes, you can. You could be whatever you want to be, but it's your choice to be that. Listen, we're not saying people should not be farmers, they should not work in the fields, and so on. But they need to have the skills they will need to make that decision themselves. It's a human rights issue we're talking here. So it is, so to answer your question, it is self-satisfaction. It's being able to make a direct impact in the lives of so many students and give, putting your, fitting your puzzle into this greater Armenian cause that we all live to one day, you know, fill. So you get to add your little piece in there as well. And a question for the, for the volunteers-to-be, whoever's in the room that is thinking about potentially mm -hmm. looking into Teach for Armenia as a, as a two years of their lives that they can, that they can give, but also what do, they, what do they get out of it? What do they get out of it? So, so first, it's a fully paid fellowship so they they get a stipend f because we ask them to move into the communities they get a master's degree out of it they um it's a two-year leadership program 
for the fellow that joins the fellowship. So throughout the two years, they are trained to become the next change makers of our nation. Our short-term vision is to impact students directly, but Teach for Armenia's long-term vision is to change the education system as a whole. We're a nation-building organization, and we do what we do is because we believe in a better Armenia, and we believe in an educated Armenia. So after two years of your fellowship, you, you join the currently 14 ambassadors of educational equity, and you go out in the world, and you whatever you've done locally, you do it on a national level to impact Armenia's education system as a whole. So and you get trainings, you get, uh, we're part of a global network called Teach for All, so you get all of the wonderful opportunities to also take advantage of whatever our network has to offer. Our fellows travel all over the world, uh, to Israel, to Tanzania, to all over the world, to the United States, and they participate in global conferences, and they join a network of people who are doing what we're doing in Armenia in 45 other countries. Okay. And if somebody joins, can you, uh, you have a few more minutes, can you sure. tell the prospective volunteers or prospective Teach for Armenia fellows, what is the process like? Like, so they say that, you know, the process of applying for, and then what happens after, and when they get to Armenia, what happens? Sure. How do they get selected to sure. what school they, they, which region they're gonna go to? That'd be Absolutely. great. Absolutely. So the process is, it's, um, so we, t so we select the top 10% of applicants who apply to our fellowship. So first you apply to the fellowship because at Teach for Armenia, what we do is we give them the methodology of teaching. So we don't teach them the subjects that they need to be teaching. So they go through subject testing. So if I apply and I say I'm going to be teaching Hayat Spad Mutun, I'm going to be given a Hayat Spad Mutun exam. Upon passing that exam and upon going through assessment center, uh, which is done virtually, you're selected into the fellowship. Then we invite you to Summer Institute. It is fully paid by Teach for Armenia. We all gather together in Dilijan. That's where currently our summer institutes are being taken place. So for five weeks, we work together to learn the methodologies they're going to be needing to, to be ready to go by September 1. So it's also summer school. So the first two weeks, the fellows work directly with our mentor teams. And after that, we open up the school to, for summer school. So children attend the summer school. And the fellows get to run the summer school to get practice into September 1. So what happens? happens is after successfully passing the five-week summer institute rigorous training program then they are placed in one of our communities so communities apply to teach for Armenia uh, that when there when there's a teacher need and we screen the communities we place where the need is and after we have the need we place that fellow there we choose the communities that the fellows go to but I've made the comment earlier as well too that if there's a certain region you're interested in we take that into consideration as well too but whatever we see that I Nautic as an individual, I'm going to be making a difference in a community, that's where the team will place you in. And after that, you're linked to a mentor who guides you through your fellowship from A through Z. Uh, we have a big mentorship team who works directly with the fellows, so we support them with their lessons, planning, working with the principals, the content, and all that wonderful stuff. We do monitor, we monitor the schools with webcams, so, so we hold your hand essentially throughout the fellowship, so we don't just recruit you and throw you into some rural community that you don't even know where it is on the map or Google Maps doesn't even know where it is. Well, great. Uh, thank you so much for attending. And if you have any other questions, if you're interested in becoming a fellow, uh, I'm sure Narek's going to be here after his, his talk. And then th th you have a tent over yes, there, right? Yes, our tent is so right there. So you can go the over the tent and ask whatever questions that you uh, have from Narek. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.